Okay, um, so we've worked a little bit on you know setting up a, a tic-tac-toe game, and we've got a working tic-tac-toe game. We've got a non-working AI, it just does a couple things so far. Uh, but what I want to look at in this lesson is kind of a little bit of algorithmic thinking and kind of simplifying our code. Lots of ways to do these types of things, uh, but here's just one uh, idea that you might want to take a look at. So, you know, you look at this section here is where we're looking for the winner. And you see how we've got just got a huge list of, uh, you know, if statements. This actually probably should be if else, uh, but that's fine. Um, what we want to do is think about if we can shorten this somehow and uh, how we could do that. So, basically, what we're doing is we're looking at a series of numbers. So, one, two, three, it's the top row, four, five, six is the middle row. 789 is the bottom row. And we're looking at those and saying, are do they have the same item in them? They have, all have X's, they all have O's. Okay, so computers are very good at repetitive actions. So what we want to do is we want to try and do that in a bit more let's say algorithmic way. Okay, so basically we want to we want to find the result. So is this a win? Is this a loss? So true or false. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we're gonna assume the result is true. Okay. And then what we gotta do is we gotta confirm it. Okay, so for cell number in one, comma two, comma three. Okay. So we got one, two, and three here. So we want to basically replace this with what we're gonna put in here. So notice the numbers are one, two, three. Okay, for, for cell number in one, two, three. So if self dot cells cell number does not equal the player okay so think about that for a second so if it's not the player the result equals false okay. so if in our program so we're assuming say we're looking at row with uh, cells one, two, and three. So if this is x, 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 so does cell one equal x? Yes, so it doesn't happen, so it's still true. Cell two is x, still true. Let's say this is blank, this is not the player, so it's blank or it's an O, so the result is false. So what we have to do is if the result uh, equals true, return true. Otherwise, we just keep going and checking the rest. So let, let's see if that works. So five, four, eight. Okay, so one, two, three, it still works. So we know that whatever we did, it was working. Should we close that. Now, now we don't want to copy this over and over again because that's the same as just doing it this way. So we're going to do this with another loop. Okay, so for what we call that, uh, I don't know, we'll call it win maybe. Yeah. Let's see, that's a combination combo. In what we do is we're going to make a list of lists. So one, two, comma three. 3, comma, 4, comma, 5. Oops. So we're just enumerating all of the possible wins. So we've got 7, comma, 8, comma, 9. I'm not sure why I keep hitting period. Um, let's see, we're going to do vertical, so that's 1, oops, comma, 4, comma, 7. Let's see, we've got 2, comma, 5, comma, Oops, so five comma eight, and we got three comma six comma nine. Now we have to do the diagonals, which are one comma five comma nine, and the last one is uh, three comma five comma seven. So those are all of our possible combinations. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to tab that over, and instead of one two three. I'm just going to say combo. So what will happen is this loop here, the first time through, combo equals one, two, three. 
So this is one, two, three, and notice the brackets, it's a list, so it'll check for that, okay? So as soon as we get to one that's true, it's gonna return true. If none of them are true, it's going to return false. Okay. So it will only get to this line, line 34 in this case, if these are all, if, yeah, this is always false. Okay. So I can get rid of all these. Don't need that. So we took that big long group of if statements, turned it into something a bit more elegant. Uh, let's make sure it works, but I'm pretty confident it will, unless there's an error in there we don't know, naturally. Um, so, oh. Am I missing one? That's good. Let's, let's run it. What was the error? Invalid syntax. That's not good. Okay, um, hate when that happens. Yeah. Okay, so let's try our game again. So I'm going to go five. Computer's going to go that way. I'm going to go two. And I'm going to go to eight. X wins. So you can see at least two, five, and eight is working. Now, if you were thinking through it, you would probably you would take the time uh, to, how can I put it, to test all possible options. Um, but let's just assume that we did this correctly. So if these, usually if one works and all the numbers are right, the rest of them will work. Okay. So again, just to reiterate how this works. Um, so we've we've created all the possible combinations of wins. We made a list of the lists. So the first time through, the combo here is one, two, three. So we go through one, then two, then three. See if they are not the player. If they're not the player, then it's false. Um, if we do get a true result, if it makes it through, it means one of these is true, it returns true. Otherwise, at the very end, we return false. So that kind of simplifies our code and just makes it a little bit more uh, readable as well. Now, one thing that makes this nice is let's say we decided to change our game and made it uh, you know, four by four, so it was a much larger uh, set of possibilities. We could easily update this uh, rather than having to put a, a bunch more if-then statements. Okay. So that is just uh, one way of doing it. There's, there's other ways I'm sure that would be more optimized, but that one hopefully is simple to understand. So give it a shot.